Welcome to part 9 of My Career Tips for Software Testers. Today is going to be a bit of a rant. I'm going to be talking about manual versus automation testing. Now, I think this is the wrong discussion to be having, and I try to avoid having these two terms on my profile like the plague. I want to establish myself as a technical tester. I have credibility in the mobile app development space, but I don't do manual testing and I don't do automation testing either. And it's a it's such a common thing in the industry to put job ads as either functional or manual testing versus automation testing. At the end of the day, testers use tools to help deliver value. Just because a programmer wrote code with their keyboard doesn't make them a manual programmer. So why do we still use these terms to distinguish the, the different roles we have in testing? So I'm going to go through a proposal to change some of the terminology that we're using in the industry. So yes, that's, that's going to be today's rant, manual versus automation. And short answer, I think it's the wrong conversation to be having. So um, I will walk you through my LinkedIn profile. And if you have a browse through, you will not see generally any reference to these terms as much as possible. I try to demonstrate my technical skills and credibility above saying that I am an automation guru. If you want someone to help you write automation frameworks from the ground up, I am not the right person for that type of job. And if I somehow get into a job ad where that is expected for me, I'll be open and honest and I say, look, you've got the wrong person. That is not my strength. My strengths are in exploratory testing and I try to encourage other elements of quality that I find fascinating too. And they're more along those functional sides, but I wouldn't call myself a manual tester either because that's almost a swear word in today's industry. Um, and I like helping people develop their quality practices as well. I like to collaborate with software engineers in how to improve their testing process. Um, there might be a couple of references to Selenium on my profile, but I don't draw, I don't point to it and say, look, I'm a Selenium expert. Just because I've spoken at Selenium Conf in India doesn't make me an expert. I, I interview people who work in the space. I've got an interview with Manush Kumar on my profile who runs the Selenium conference in India too, but doesn't make me an expert. It just makes me interested in the stuff that our industry is doing. And if you have a look through my job descriptions as well, I try to avoid using the word uh, QA or automation. Unfortunately, there was there's one role that I did have uh, QA in my title, but on my LinkedIn profile, I have it as a uh, lead automation test engineer. I prefer the term software tester or test engineer in my profile, and those are the terms I'm going to use in my profile. I'm not going to use QA or automation. If you even have a look through how my CV has evolved over the time, I still try to avoid using these terms. So this, this is my most recent visual survey. I have a two-page CV as well for when the one-page visual one is just a little too experimental. But if I zoom in on my profile, I emphasize mobile exploratory testing as my expertise, and I'm more interested in, el in elements of accessibility, data science, and visual thinking. So more of the product quality side, I'm more interested in learning and developing and helping uh, engineering companies own that process. I am not your automation guru, so hopefully I communicate that in my profile as much as possible. Uh, James Bark has got a really interesting blog post on seven different types of testers. So if you want to have some different terms that you can use to talk about different testing roles, um, I propose these different structures that you can uh, use instead of manual or automation. So he goes through some points that there's at least he can perceive seven different types of testers. Maybe an administration tester wants to help move things along. They're really good at the admin, helping keep the team up to date and keeping everything uh, rolling and part of that big picture. You have the technical tester, which is what I imagine most job ads on the job market today uh, are actually looking for technical testers. People who uh, like to build tools, collaborate with software engineers and help improve that process. Um, often they're called uh, uh, test engineers or software developers in test 
or a whole bunch of other different phrases. And, and the reason why I think uh, this type of tester is generally in demand is because technical skills and coding ability are more concrete. A developer or a test engineer can point to a framework or a, something they've built. They can point to it and go, I helped build that. All the other types of testers, um, a lot of their work and value is less, uh, is more abstract. Um, it's not quite so concrete. We can't really point to something and go, I helped build that. If you're helping your team prevent bugs or identify risks early, you can't point to one thing and say, I helped build that. So another type of tester might be the uh, analytical tester who really likes to deep dive into databases or or, or do that type of analysis, look into metrics and whatnot. And I'd say I tend to uh, align more with that type of tester. I love digging into analytics. You should see my social media post, uh, my social media marketing post. I deep dive into all the analytics and I love that, love that stuff. I've also helped my team develop a mobile analytics dashboard to keep track of metrics and engagement and other elements of quality that we want to keep track of. I love that stuff. That's that's me to a T, analytical tester. There is also the social tester who's really good at getting other people on board with the testing effort. The empathetic tester uh, who's really focused on the product. They might be aligned with the business analyst role or the product manager role. Um, but they really enjoy that, that customer experience and trying to really focus on improving that part of the product. Um, the user expert uh, also might be very similar to the empathetic tester um, and might be also domain experts in the area. Someone who's got like the really strong business focus or maybe they've got a lower background or, or whatnot. They just know the, the business domain really well. And I think these types of testers are really powerful. I've worked with a couple of them and they've been great testers to work with. Um, and uh, James pulls out another one for the, the developer, often the developer in test. I think there's a lot of uh, similarities between the technical tester and the developer in test. Um, but one caveat is that uh, people tend to focus, these types of testers tend to focus too much on um, the technical skills and tools rather than focusing on software testing as a craft. Um, they don't tend to do a deep dive study into other testing skills. So hopefully that gives you a few more words um, to describe some other testing roles out there. I really think we should purge the word automation or manual testing from, from our vocabulary uh, when it comes to the roles that testers do. Um, we can say that we want some testers to help us build uh, test automation suites or have technical skills or backgrounds, but I don't think we should be using the term manual versus automation um, to, 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 to describe uh, the roles that testers do on a regular basis. However, businesses will say they want developers in test because these skills are in demand. And most job ads I see are aligned with this path. Um, you can be other different types of testers, but you're going to struggle a little bit more to, to communicate your skills and values and what you can bring to a role. Um, you also have to practice selling your skills and expertise a little bit more. Um, because businesses are demanding more technical and coding skills, if you do have these other skills that are really useful, you just have to work on selling them uh, more effectively and trying to draw attention to the fact that you can add a lot of business value in other elements of the quality practices. So there we go. I hope you've learned something about trying to avoid using uh, manual or automation testing to describe what we do as testers. Thank you.